Now, bringing you the very best in New Hampshire-based local music on IPMNation.com and 100.1 The Planet, this is Local Outbreak.
And joining us live in studio, we have Dan from the band Horror. Hello, sir. Hey, it's great to be here, Matt. Thank well, you. Yeah, welcome to the program. Uh, looking forward to playing some of your tunes today and uh, getting to know you a little bit. Um, part of why you're here. So today is it's kind of a kind of a theme today. Uh, we're talking to people who are going to be on this big show uh, coming up October 19th at Terminus. Our friends at uh, Terminus in Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, you guys are going to be playing there along with uh, we just had Able Blood here. Uh, also, uh, Questing Beast is on that show. And uh, the Negans, Dead Harrison, of course. Uh, and uh, that's going to be uh, coming up October 19th. So so it's wonderful to have you here. Tell us about uh, tell us about the band. Tell us about horror. So um, me and my buddy Steve, we started it years ago. Um, it was just a little project we were doing in high school. And as it turned out, people wanted to join. Uh, my buddy George started playing the bass for us. And then afterwards, his brother Johnny. And... Uh, we had a couple incarnations of lineups throughout the years, but we finally here settled on a, our main one now where we're going to be going out playing shows. And this is actually our record release show at Terminus. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, we've been working hard for years to actually get there. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's going to be an awesome night. Super excited about it. Yeah. Um, it, so it's a full album. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Full album. OK. And uh, where did you record? Well, we recorded uh, Bla at uh, Black Heart Sound with um, Eric. Okay, Eric Sauter, yeah. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, we, I always say we had him on the show a few months ago, and, um, you know, his his name, it was great to have him on because his name comes up on the show a lot. Um, actually, Able Blood, uh, who was here in the first hour, uh, their album, I think Eric, Ma uh, they didn't record there with him, but he Eric mastered the album, I believe. Okay, yeah. But, um, yeah, so... Uh, and what went into the decision to do a full album? Because obviously you have options. You know, you can you can do an album, you can do an EP, you can just release singles. Why did you guys decide to do a full album? Well, we had so much material at this point. We were like, you know what? Screw it. We might as well just do the whole thing and then yeah. drop it, you know? Um, we collaborated with this artist, Maxime Ticardi. From, uh, he makes insane artwork. Okay. Uh, our album cover is actually made in his blood. Crazy stuff. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Like he put his blood in the ink? I I think so. I <laughs> I have no idea, but I know he made it with his blood, which wow. we thought was absolutely crazy. Well, let, let's play a track, and I think we're going to move you to a different microphone. <laughs> For those of you watching on video, uh, that one uh, needs uh, some Levitra or something. <laughs> but uh, here, let's, um, let's play a song. I'm going to play... Uh, uh, let's play... Oh, let's play Exorcist. I really like this one. And then we'll uh, we'll come back and talk about it. Uh, if you're just joining us, uh, we have Dan uh, from the band Horror here with us live in studio.
That'll get the blood pumping. That is Exorcist, and uh, the band is Horror, and we have Dan uh, from Horror here in studio with us. All right, let's see let's see how this mic is working. How you doing, Dan? I can't hear you, and I don't know why, but uh, let's see. Go ahead and talk. You are not there. No, you're you're on a you're on one of these channels. All right. Oh oh oh. Oh hello. I found you. Awesome. Ah, there we there go. I am. There All right. Go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're just joining us, we had to switch Dan to a different mic, um, <laughs> but these things happen. But no, that that mic never fails us. I, Jenny doesn't like it when I say that because she thinks I'm going to jinx it. Yes, but, you are. But, but so far, <laughs> so it. so far, that mic has been phenomenal. Uh. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I love that. I love the time changes, especially the breakdown at the end. Oh, oh yeah. The, the groove on that is is just uh, truly remarkable. And so now you were saying off air while that was was playing. So that's just you and Steve. Is that the, the drummer? Yeah. So uh, me and my drummer, we went into Eric's studio. We recorded the whole thing. Uh, Steve got the drums down. I did the bass, the guitars, the vocals, and um, Eric killed it with the production and the master or the mixing. It was absolutely killer. Yeah. But is is that how you did the full album? Or? Yeah, it is. Okay, it's so, the entire album. So the whole thing is just the two of you. Yeah. Oh wow! Wow! Very cool. Um, is that a lot of, uh, is that a lot of pressure? Is that, you know, because you're doing, I mean, aside from the drums, you're doing everything else. I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot for one guy. Well, it's not particularly a lot of pressure. We yeah. had a bunch of material for a while now. Right. And, uh, so we had a lot of time to practice it. So everything that we did was I went into the studio knew exactly what I needed to do for each part. Just yeah. Banged it out. So in some ways it's easier, right? Because you're not dealing with you know, I, I've played in a lot of bands, but never anything like what you're doing in terms of just, you know, two guys going in and right. doing everything. So um, not having to deal with multiple schedules and, and all of that. I mean, I can see where in that sense, it's probably a lot easier, actually. Yeah, that and you can make it sound exactly how you want it to. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's that's great. Um, is, now, where does the, uh, the song uh, Exorcist, is that... Uh, are, were you inspired by the film or the book? Or oh, absolutely the film. Yeah, I've seen that film like a hundred thousand times as Have a kid. You? you know, oh god, yes. Yeah. And uh, well, I mean, my band is based around telling horror stories. Yep. And the horrors of life. Our next album is going to be about a little bit more of a realistic approach. But this album is about you know the fantasy side of horror. Yeah, yeah. You know, a funny thing about The Exorcist for me, I've I, I think it's an incredible film. But um, I have a list, actually. It's a short list, but I have a list of films that I think are just some of the most just incredible theatrical accomplishments of all time that I never want to see again. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's I how do. I feel about The Exorcist. I think it's an amazing film. Fantastic. I've seen it once, and I never want to see it again. Oh, I get it. <laughs> I totally get it. <laughs> um, Trying to think, what is it? Requiem for a Dream? Is that? Is oh that the, God, Requiem for a Dream. You know the film, yeah. Uh -huh. That's that's another one that's on my list. I saw that one once, so yeah. Great, I'm good on it. Great film. I would recommend oh, it to absolutely. anybody. I'm never watching it again. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who who writes the songs? Do you write everything, or does Steve help you with that? Oh, we or? both write them. Yeah. 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 Steve does the drums. He'll give me ideas for guitars and solos and whatnot, and uh, and. I'll, to write my parts yeah. but now that we have um we have two new members uh we got our bassist will about um a little over a year ago and dude's been killing it one of the greatest basses i've ever met in my entire life no he, kidding awesome guy awesome musician and we had just recently within the past um like two months uh got a new guitarist named cody parsons okay uh, he also plays with a band called martial law awesome group awesome bunch of guys i've known them for a long long time yeah but um, now that we're all writing together, it sounds totally different, really? but in the same vein. It's really, really cool. Yeah. Uh, now, why did, did you bring in these other guys initially for live shows? Or? Initially, yeah. Yeah. And I wanted to see like how it would go writing with them and everything. And I love it. Yeah. It's really cool to be able to write with like a group of people, you know, because writing with Steve's awesome. Yeah. You know, but getting more input, different perspectives, different musical backgrounds from people. It's absolutely killer. It's good that you're able to do that and embrace it because not everyone can. You know, some right. some people are, are kind of not necessarily selfish, but but you know, some people can't just or, or it's hard for them to really kind of open that up. Right. Um, so it, it's great that you're able to do that. Um, did um, before these other guys joined the band when like did you ever do any live shows just you and Steve? Did you ever? 
try to uh-huh. pull that off or with yeah you know, I, I don't know how you would even do it but maybe with backing tracks or something but. yeah we i mean at that point we didn't have a money i mean for like an amplifier at yeah. that point you know like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so shows were super far out of our heads um yeah once we did get our bassist uh johnny years ago we played a couple of shows um it's usually down like way southern mass okay um we only played a couple but yeah with uh this new incarnation of horror we played one show um with uh a guitarist we're working with for a little bit named brandon um and uh, i forgot where it was exactly but it it went really well it was an awesome show we met the band vincent crowley they they were awesome guys and uh it was a really fun time yeah 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 uh when these um when new people come into the band, I, I mean, I imagine it takes a little bit of time for them to learn everything. I mean, oh, it's, sure. it, you know, it's fairly sophisticated. And also, too, you know, with what you're doing and that song Exorcist is a great example. I mean, you've really got to have your chops because it's time changes. and Oh, sure. You know, just really, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's complex. It's not it's not three chord verse chorus verse chorus right, rock right. and roll, you know. Yeah. So I'd imagine, you know, they've, they've really got to uh, spend some time. It's funny. <laughs> it's funny you say that because with the musicians that I have now, it almost took them no time at all. That's awesome. They sat yeah. down, they learned it. It was, I was blown away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Will learned it really fast. Cody, I mean, he's recording bands. He has his own studio. He's doing all this stuff and he still banged out the entire album. No in kidding. Like a month. It was oh. absolutely killer. Oh, that's great. Oh yeah. That's the- great. Um, are all the songs, uh, it, well, let me ask it this way. Is there a theme to the album? I mean, I mean, you, you know, you talked about, you know, what, what the subject matter is, is that, right. is that, is there a story to the album or are they all just kind of about like, like what you described earlier? Well, some songs are just kind of about horror in general, you know, yeah. like Black Widow, we have about Countess Bathory, uh, Exorcist about the Exorcist, you know, yeah. but then we have songs like Darkness and Agony, which are about depression and, uh, really that dark place, mm-hmm. you know, that really dark mental place that you get, especially when um, you feel hopeless, feel like everything's falling apart for you, you yeah. know? And I wanted to take that and put it into music as well as I could. Yeah. Um, so the horrors of life. <laughs> is, is, is that something that you deal with? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You have depression, um, mental health issues, I think are very, very much looked over, um, underfunded. Yeah. It, it's awful, you know? That's something that we discuss a lot on the show, and we have actually for years. Because so, so I'm I'm pretty open about it now. I haven't always been, but I also struggle with depression. Mm. Um, and uh, you know, we uh, who was it? Uh, we had somebody on the show. Who did we have on the show last week? We were talking about the same thing. M- music Dr. about. B. Oh no! It was. Um, I'm sorry. It was Everfelt. Uh, I was thinking oh, of, of a band. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know if you know this band Everfelt. They're from Illinois. They skyped in, but they um, they they write a lot about that kind of thing too and right. you know but it's but it's it's um also their music is is kind of dark but it's they have more of a psychedelic metal thing going oh that's cool but we were talking about with uh adam seglich the singer about how you know he likes the music to be really dark even though the lyrics are actually quite hopeful because hmm. his his approach is you know you're in this dark tunnel i want to meet you there i want to meet you where you are to bring you this message oh. of hope and he described it as a tunnel. And I was like, yeah, I can relate to that. I can relate to all of that. That's a lot happier than the way I went. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, but you're right though. I mean, these things are not addressed enough. Um, and you know, there's a lot of stigma around all of that. So, and, and another thing we talk about a lot on the show is when you can take these terrible things and, and create something with them. So you're taking something negative, but you're creating something positive with it. Right. You know, and that's to me, that's the best therapy, right? You know, if, oh, you absolutely. Can, if you can use these things that drag us down or traumatic events or whatever it is, but then create with that. Yeah, that's, that's the best, the best way to deal with it. You yeah, know? exactly. You know, I want to touch upon some more themes um, in this upcoming album, too. Uh, it's very much so along those lines. Like I said, straying less away from the like you know vampires, ghouls, goblins type stuff. Yeah. More into the like what people deal with and what's going on, and not not in so much of a political sense, but more just in yeah. like, in everyday life type of thing. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, we should uh, play another track from the album. Uh, do you have a? Do you, is there one that you're pushing as kind of a single? Or? Well, um, our first single was Necromancer. I think. The next, I mean, the best one to play, I'd say, 
Let's hear Black Widow. Black Widow? Okay. Yeah. Any kind of a story behind this one? Well, this one's uh, this one's the one about Countess Bathory. Huge inspirations from bands like Venom, bands like Macabre, um, and I absolutely love this song. It's one of our heavier ones on the album for sure. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Get ready. It's going to get even heavier. This is Black Widow. The band is horror. is black widow the band is horror and we have dan from the band horror here with us alive in studio on this saturday morning they're going to be playing a big show coming up october 19th at terminus in nashua new hampshire which is an amazing venue you've you've been there already right dan oh yeah yeah i i, I tell everybody when you walk in the, the first time it's like walking into another world 
It is. It, yeah. Oh, yeah. The place yeah. is awesome. Yeah. And I practice there as well with my band. Oh, uh, you do? In okay. Same building. Yep. Oh. Yep. So it's a pretty easy, uh, re- pretty easy commute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Ab- Abel Blood, our uh, our first guest that we had on in oh, yeah. uh, in hour yeah. one, they also uh, practice there. Um, yeah. No, it's it's a great uh, it's a great location. Um, I love that. I mean, part of what I really like about your sound is, you know, you can do the. It's fast. It's heavy, but but it's also very melodic. Yeah, you know, you can really kind of find the groove in it because a lot of bands that operate in this particular genre really aren't that melodic. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So I I think that's really cool, I, and I assume that's important to you. It is. It's quite important. Yeah. We want to be able to have our songs be as heavy as possible, but also have that nice melody with it. You know? Yeah, yeah. Something to like be able to pleasantly listen to. Right. Without it just being like grindcore. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got some fast fingers too. Uh, how how old were you when you started playing guitar? I was twelve. Yeah. I'm twenty seven now. So you started pretty young. Yeah. 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 Um, was it always your goal to be able to play like that? To be able to to, oh. to play really fast. Yes. Uh, ever since I saw B- or heard Buckethead on Guitar Hero 2, I knew that oh, no he, kidding. he yeah. would be my favorite. And then I found out about the likes of Paul Gilbert, Ingve Malmsteen. And I, it just blew up from there. Yeah. Never looked back. Yeah. You know? um, was that your first instrument? A guitar, yeah. 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 And then from there, you also learned bass, obviously. And- oh, uh, yeah. I taught myself bass. I'm not a very good bassist, but... I, I can play a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. My very first guitar, I actually won from a Lego sweepstakes, man. Really? Yeah, it was a Bionicle sweepstakes with uh, the All-American Rejects. I think I was like, God, I must have been like eight, nine, and um, I just so happened to win it. It was this <laughs> junky Chinese guitar with a Lego sticker slapped on it. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. Yep. Then, uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Steve sat down with the guitar one day, the... Uh, the cable was poking out, crushed it into the guitar. I had to throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Wow. Um, now, I'm really curious about your vocals because uh, I I can't imagine what it must be like to sing that way. Hmm. Are, are you able to, uh, like, do, do you ever get a sore throat or did you learn how to do it? Because from what everyone tells me, if you learn how to do it correctly, hmm. you won't have any problems. The only problem is not everyone learns how to do it correctly. Right. See, I never learned how to really do it. I just okay. started doing it until it was comfortable. It used to hurt. Yeah. Like years ago, oh, God, my throat would be killing me after. Really? Yep. Now, if I'm not dehydrated, it's fine. Okay. But make sure you're hydrated, everybody. Yeah. You, gotta, <laughs> you can really mess up your throat. But no, when I'm doing anything like that, it's it just comes out really clean. It doesn't hurt at all. Yeah, that's good. Uh, what about when you're playing live? Do you ever run into a problem where you know because you mentioned hydration and obviously if you're playing in a in a hot room, you know that that might be an issue. Does that ever? Uh... Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's happened to me before. I was playing with this uh, a brutal death metal band called Infected God for a while. Okay. And um, there was this one time. There was at, it was at a it was at a marijuana farm. Right. Yeah. And I remember getting up on stage and my throat was so dry that I was talking like this. <laughs> and I get up and I was just barking into the microphone. I oh, couldn't wow. do anything. I was like, oh, I know this sounds terrible, but mm, we got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, do your fingers ever get tired playing like that? Oh, God, no. No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah, I can't imagine what it must be like to play that way. Yeah, none of the bands that I've ever played in really, you know, nothing really super fast. So, <laughs> so to me, it's very impressive. I, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll spend sometimes eight to ten hours a day, especially at studio days, just playing essentially nonstop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it takes a lot. Um, how many uh, – I mean, do you guys have more songs that obviously, you know, I assume you're – as you mentioned earlier, you've got new material planned for the next album and you're writing together – um, do you play anything live now that you haven't already put on this album? Or? We're planning to. Okay. Um, we got to make sure it sounds good, pretty good first. Yeah. And then we're going to be playing it live as we can. Yeah. Um, so our album only really runs about 32 minutes long, I believe. Okay. So typically, if we're getting like a 45 minute set, we'll be able to play a bunch of songs. Yeah. But that's the idea for now. Okay. Okay. Well, let's. Um Let's play another one. Uh, so I'm curious about this song, uh, Compelled to Kill. What's oh, this about? <laughs> Compelled to Kill. That one was about uh, Diary of a Serial Killer, which is 
an insane movie if you've never seen it. Um, or sorry, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. There we go. Okay. Amazing movie. Absolutely incredible. It follows um, – the whole movie is through his eyes, you know, as opposed to like, you know, the the people running away, yeah. you know, the – the victims of the movie. It's him. Okay. The whole movie's him and it's twisted. Yeah. Awesome stuff. And the music was heavily, heavily inspired by bands like Children of Bodom. Um, and of course, Macabre. I love them. They, they do everything, you know? Yeah. Um, but um, Children of Bodom was, I was in a huge kick with them for a while. And man, it, Alexi Leho opened my, opened my eyes, broadened my perspectives to a lot of different stuff. Really? Yeah. It, I, it, 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 in what way? Oh, the way he does melodies, there's especially um, like if songs like Mask of Sanity and then If You Want Peace, Prepare for War. The guitar work in these songs are unparalleled. They're amazing. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to try to emulate something like that. And I'm no Alexi Leho, so it came out different. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is a song I'm actually really proud of. Uh, one of my favorite solos I've ever written. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Yeah. Oh, very curious here. The sound. All right, let's give this a spin. If you are just joining us, we have Dan from the band Horror here with us live in studio, and this is called Compelled to Kill.
like that dramatic ending. That's cool. <laughs> that is compelled to kill. And uh, the band is horror. We have Dan from the band horror here with us uh, live in studio. Uh, by the way, uh, some uh, chat room activity. Our friend uh, Spelfy Ham is in there, of course, uh, from Terminus and says, hi, Dan. Hi, Matt. Hi, Jen. Uh, BF Raid uh, says uh, this song is awesome. Hell yeah. Andre Dumont, of course, from Dead Harrison says waking up to some horror uh, this show hits right in the morning spot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Uh, hello to uh, Easy Beat uh, Society. <laughs> uh, Spelfy uh, made a, a comment about what we were talking earlier about mental health. Uh, she said, facts, too much stigma around talking about mental health. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Although not as much as there used to be, which is uh, absolutely. Yeah, which is great. It's getting so better. It, it is, is getting better. It is getting better. Um, let's see. Oh, Eleanor is in the chat room. Uh, says, I want these horror vocals inside my body. Why? <laughs> that's an interesting way of phrasing that. I, so, <laughs> yeah, that, that sure is interesting. She wants to be able to sing that way, I guess. I <laughs> let's go with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got to, uh, I got to see Eleanor on Tuesday. I went there to meet with her and, uh, about some things and, uh, oh, nice. yeah, lot, lots of good things going on. Lots of positive things. Oh yeah. Very excited. Very excited. Um, oh, Spelfy says, yay, the whole Terminus crew in the chat. And uh, Andre says, oh, those vocals will be coursing through every body molecule at Terminus. Yeah, well, they will. I saw your PA, man. That thing looks crazy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Jenny, you wanted to, uh, you were going to tell us more yes. about that show? And all the bands you're hearing today, you can see live at Terminus Underground on Saturday, October 19th. Terminus is located at 134 Haines Street in Nashua. Doors will open at 5 p.m., 21 plus BYOB. Entry is $20 and includes the haunted house and the show. So check out all the bands from today live at Terminus Underground on October 19th. Very good, very good. And uh, if you are listening live on Saturday, of course, coming up in the third hour, we have the Gray Curtain, a uh, couple members joining us, I think. And uh, really look at Boy, they are fascinating. What a, right? what a unique sound they have. It so will be, yeah. Really looking forward to that. Um, Dan, uh, tell us about your live show. I mean, do you, do you have any effects or anything, or, or do you guys just play? Or I mean, typically we just play. We don't really have, like, a gimmick or anything yeah. like that. It's always cool when the venue has, like, some stuff up. Like, uh, Terminus is just loaded with crazy stuff, like skeletons, spider webs, yeah. monsters, oh, yeah. mayhem, you know, the whole nine. But, um, yeah. yeah, whenever we play, we typically just wear, like, what I'm wearing now, T-shirt, yeah. jeans, and just go up there and play. I'm having visions of, you know, the future. You guys in an arena with a big screen of all kinds of... Uh, <laughs> oh yeah all kinds of terrible things happening on, <laughs> on the screen while you guys are oh, playing. Dude, that'd be great we I, want to take over the world man yeah, yeah, so you yeah, know. yeah yeah no absolutely now if you, you gotten to play with any um if you gotten to open for any any of the bands you know you were talking earlier about some of the bands that you really love and admire have you have you gotten to any opportunities to, to play with any of those bands yet or not quite yeah um i played with some really really cool bands um, like for instance, permanent disfigurement was an awesome band. Uh, I played with, with infected God. Yep. Um, I had played a couple of shows with them. Um, and uh, Vincent Crowley was another one. They were, uh, absolutely killer guys. I knew about them prior and they're awesome music. Yeah. Um, but we haven't played too, too many shows to be able to actually do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, for what it's worth, though, all the bands that we played with, um, all of our flyers are still up on the Instagram and everything. They're all wonderful bands. There hasn't been a single band we played with where I've disliked. So yeah, yeah. if you guys are interested, go check them out. Yeah. Everyone's going to be a killer band. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, what was the um, uh, your your logo? Who designed your logo? So that's an artist named Alex Ridley. Okay. Um, he's based out of Canada, uh, an old friend of mine. I've known him for probably a decade now. And I asked him, like, hey, man, can you just make something, like, bones and bloody and just see what you come up with? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, dude, whatever. And he sent me that, and I was like, oh, yeah, okay, that's cool. Yeah. You know? I was particularly curious about it because what I like about the logo is, so um, a lot of the, the bands, again, that are in kind of your genre, they have logos with fonts kind of similar to that. But they are 
indecipherable to me. Right. But your logo, so you've got that cool kind of font, but but you can read it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? See, that's what we wanted, too. We didn't want it to be like, you know, the back of a computer chair where you've been laying on it too long. It's all crinkled. <laughs> you know, we didn't yeah. want it to be something like that. We, we, yeah. we wanted people to actually read it and know who we were. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, there's a lot of bit. Jeez, I remember... Uh, <laughs> So years ago, um, I don't know if you remember Strawberries and then FYE bought it, but, you know, the old uh, music store there. And, and I just remember uh, flipping through CDs at work or putting CDs away and, and just, you know, looking at the covers of some of these uh, uh, bands and, and just, and again, in, in that specific genre, just being like, I, I don't know what that says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them are unbelievable. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, you know, cause I'm also a marketing guy. So from my perspective, it's like, why would you want something that no one can read? But, I'll, but, but that seems to be the thing for a lot of these bands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I don't understand it personally, but it yeah. looks really cool. So right, especially right. seeing that live with the music, it adds yeah. a lot of atmosphere. I see why they do it, but as yeah. far as marketing goes, you're right. It's, it ain't quite it. Yeah. Some of those album covers too. Like, oh uh, man. Yeah. Um, there's a, a cannibal corpse uh, album cover that still uh, gives me nightmares. Oh yeah. Which one? I don't remember the <laughs> name. I've, I've blocked it out, but yeah, probably all, probably any of them. All actually, any of yeah. them. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm actually not even kidding when I say this, if I had to put cannibal corpse CDs into the bin, um, I would try not to look directly at the CD. <laughs> like I'm, 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 I'm actually not kidding. I'm very squeamish about that. But uh, no, but anyway, so the point being, though, I, I really like the logo. I think it's cool. Awesome. Man. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, what is kind of the future trajectory for you guys? So obviously, so the 19th, you mentioned that's the official CD release party, correct? Yes, it is. And what's what's the name of the album, by the way? I don't know if we talked about it's that. Self-titled. It's oh, just it's self-titled. It's just horror by horror. Yeah. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, so where is that available? Uh, are there physical copies or we don't have physical copies yet. I mean, okay. we're, we're pretty broke, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no physical copies. We're working on getting some merch for this show. Okay. Hopefully it shows up in time, but, um, yeah, otherwise, um, that, that's pretty much where we're at with like that kind of media. Yeah. As far as like streaming, we are on Apple music, Spotify, YouTube, definitely check out our YouTube. We're really pumping up those numbers. Cool. Um, good, good. But we're basically on any stream platform that you can access yeah and uh we're gonna continue uploading to youtube videos shorts whatever it might be okay just kind of keep everyone updated and have yeah. a little fun like maybe some playthrough videos and stuff like that i think right now that's the most important thing is well obviously well no actually let me rephrase that so being on all the streaming platforms that's the most important thing and you've got that covered. sure but I think after that, YouTube right now is the most important thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, I absolutely agree. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it changes. You know, tomorrow, something completely different might oh, be the most know. important thing. Yeah. But but right now, I think it's definitely YouTube. So that's so your numbers are, are, are growing quickly? Oh, yeah. In the Good. first two months, we got 15,000 uh, without advertising at all. Fantastic. Yeah. Good. Yeah, we just set up a little bit of a Google ad campaign. So the last couple of days, we've gotten like two or three more thousand. And, okay. Excellent. Yeah, it, oh, you're on the right track then. That's fantastic. We're all so excited, man. Yeah, we, yeah. We want to take this as far as we can. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow, you're off to a great start, so that's amazing. Appreciate that. And uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So we're, we're approaching the top of the hour, so in the moment we'll play uh, we'll play one more track. Uh, Nuke uh, is the other one that you sent, but uh, anything else we should know about where people should go to find you online? Obviously, you know, we talked about the 19th, but anything else you want to make sure our listeners know about? Yeah, so uh, if you go to horror.band, Instead of dot com dot band, wicked cool. Yeah, um, it'll have links to all of our social medias, Instagram, Facebook, even stuff like SoundCloud. You know, everything's there. And um, our full album on YouTube is going to be the first thing that you see right as you get onto the page. Okay. Um, and I haven't updated it yet, but it's on. We have different tabs, like for instance, shows, and we have merch that you can request uh, when it's available. And, um, <laughs> And yeah, I mean that's that a hard up band is going to be primarily where you can find everything. Yeah. But um yeah, as far as um outside of that, just try to keep updated with our social medias yeah. and see where we're at. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Uh Nuke, what should we know about this? So, Nuke is full t fully titled Nuke the World. Oh, okay. It's our commentary on um to basically taking the position of a someone pushing the big red button, you know, just mm -hmm. destroying everything, uh, mutually assured destruction, you know? Yeah. It's our take on how much we detest war and how we see the world going right now. 
Um, the song is a tongue in cheek kind of take on that. Okay. Um, and it's our mosh song. Oh, no kidding. Okay. <laughs> but uh, damn, thank you so much. Hey, thank you for having me. Man. A- absolutely. And we will close out the segment with this. This is called Nuke from the band Horror. 